In this video, I'm going to take you guys on a step-by-step -step process on how I go about color grading my images. I've been using these tactics for, I'd say, about five years now, spanning across automotive photography, portrait photography, landscape photography, real estate photography, product photography, and basically anything. These things that you will learn here can span across all different avenues of photography. If you've clicked on one of these videos, chances are you see the first five minutes, they'll bore you with graphs and color wheels and charts and color theory, and they'll show you clips of movies and this and that. I figured that I don't want to waste your guys' time with stuff like that. I want to jump into a step-by-step -step process that shows me actually working on a photo that I actually haven't even edited yet, but just to show you guys the natural process of what goes into building the color grade of an image. So let's jump right into it. So you can see here I have a GTR open. Now I know some people shoot portraits and whatnot. These things can be translated into those other markets. I'm just showing you guys I shoot a lot of cars, so I'm going to show you guys the tactics with the car. So first things first, what we want to do is there's three main things that go into the color grade of an image. And I think when I'm looking at social media and content across the internet, I think people get caught up with trying to go for a certain look and maybe their time of day is wrong. Maybe the elements in their photo is wrong. And that's like the first big nutshell of this whole game is there's three variables that you want to keep in mind. And that is your subject. That is your background and location, that is your time of day, and then it is the color of your subject also. Those are going to be very big variables in deciding the color grade you're going to go in. So if you can think about those things ahead of time, before you're out with the car, before you're out with the person or the product, that will put you in the best situation to achieve the true color grade that you want. So start thinking about that ahead of time. If your car is white, you have a blank canvas. You can kind of go anywhere, right? But if your car is red and then you go and shoot on red brick, that's not going to make too much sense. You want to play with the colors and complementary colors in the natural photograph and also think about the edit that you want to bring that photo into. So let's get started and let's dive right into this photo of this insane GTR build. First things first, the one nerdy thing that we do have to get out of the way is making sure that your files are set up the right way. Personally, I edit in Lightroom and then I will bring the photo into Photoshop and then I will bring the saved PSD back into Lightroom. It's kind of like I'm building a sandwich of color grade, if you will. And I know some of you guys might only edit in Lightroom. When I'm done here in Lightroom, you could do a couple little tweaks and end there, but the magic really happens in Photoshop and I will show you guys shortly why. So to make sure you're set up the right way, when you're in develop, you're playing around in Pro Photo RGB. We need to make sure that when we right click on the file and we bring photo, we bring the photo into Photoshop 2024, we need to make sure that it's bringing a Pro Photo 16-bit file and that way we're working consistently with the same colors. So you're gonna come up to edit, you're gonna go to preferences, and you got these dialog boxes under external editing. If you guys want to just pause it and take these settings, implement them, that makes sure that you're going over with the best possible file. Pro Photo RGB, if I could explain this to you really quickly, let's just say sRGB will have 20 shades of every single color that you see in that color wheel. Well, when you go to Adobe 98, let's say it'll have 40 shades of every color that you see in that color wheel. When you go to Pro Photo RGB, you'll have a hundred variables of each color and what I mean by that is like a hundred shades of blue a hundred shades of red a hundred shades the number is if you search up the technical definition the numbers are way different I'm just saying it in a very simplistic term but the important thing there is it's like enabling raw for your color so when you're messing around with the sRGB file if you start to try to color grade that you'll notice that things get blotchy and pixelated really really fast if you're trying to color grade a low res sRGB file. When you go into Pro Photo, you have way more range to mess with things like the color mixer and saturations, and you'll have way more depth to your colors, which is exactly what we want. We want it when we're messing with raw photos. We want it, our colors to kind of act raw as well. So you want to keep things in Pro Photo RGB and 16 bit. So once that's set up, We'll dive into the photo here. Before I start messing and manipulating the color, 
I need to get the tonal range the way I want the darkness and the highlights to be looking because that will affect my color. If you're kind of new to the game, you can switch over to black and white. That way, like, you don't have color influencing you and you can really get, like, where you want to be as far as the tonal range goes or the brightness quality goes. But once you've been doing this for a while, you can probably just leave the color in. But what I'll do is I'll always check my white balance. Okay, that makes it a little too blue for me right now. So I'm going to go just a hair back to the blue on the white balance. And now we will start messing with the light and darks, right? So let's just get this file ready. I'm just going to kind of speed through this because I'm not really talking about editing here. We're talking more specifically about color. Let's just get it in a spot we want it in. Okay, so something like that. I'm happy with the way the darkness and highlights are being handled here. I'm actually going to do one more quick little change just for the sake of the video because I'm not going to change the sky out just to speed this up. I'm going to make sure my sky is in a spot that's not clipping. That'll do. I'm just going to put the saturation up on that. We're going to hue it a little bit. Okay, so now we'll put a layer mask on the car Lightroom is very bad at layer masking. That's why I like doing a lot of stuff in Photoshop. Um, but we'll just work with this for the sake of the video. I'm going to erase what they messed up on. Okay, so now I have my car selected. We're going to use that later. Um, so first things first, I will scroll all the way down. Now we're talking about color. Everything from here on out will pretty much be just straightforward on color. I'll come into calibration and usually mess with my blue primary. I like manipulating the blue primary but I will pretty much check all of these and see what they're doing to my photo but I'm going to take the blue primary and I'm going to shift over to more of a cyan and you can see it in my sky in the rear end of the car and the side of the building also it's dumping like red and orange into the right portion of my photo the ground the side of the car the wheels so we'll have to fix that but I like the shift that's happening here. It's putting it in a good direction for me. So now after I'm done messing with my calibrations, and you can tinker with those other channels, depending on the photo, you will have to tinker with the green channel and the, the other channel. The um, you, will, you will have to tinker with the green channel and the red channel and the shadows. But like I said, once you've been doing this for a while, you'll know, hey, I probably don't even need to explore those other channels. But it's always, it never hurts to just slide and see what's up. So... Now that we're here, we will go to Color Mixer next. And Color Mixer is going to let us individually change the hue, saturation, and luminance of very selective colors. That is amazing. We want to do anything that gives us the most control. We don't want to color grade globally. We want to color grade very specifically. So we know that the primary color calibration gave us a little the wheels are a little too dark. The ground's got like a warm purple in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to dial back my purple and magenta. It looks like it didn't do too much. We're going to dial back orange just a hair. You can see it coming out of my wheels, coming out of the lines. But then I'm going to go into luminance and change. I'm going to say everything that I want orange, I want it to be a little bit brighter. Like I'm, you know, if, if I go pretty bright, it's almost like I'm starting to like get a, it's almost like I'm starting to get a layer of, strobe on the wheels almost it's it's really adding a good amount of light in there if you if i just click on what i've done so far you can see the difference the side of the car is changing the wheels changing um, the lines are changing a bit the barricades are changing i like that so the sky i wanted to go a little bit more cyan that's a little bit too much something like that and you'll see a lot of the changes i'm making are very small color is being worked on like after a bunch of tweaks are made you'll you'll maybe start with a little bit of color then do some tweaks start with a little color add, add a little bit more color do some tweaks it's like you're building it constantly and then when you get to the end of it you make your final decision globally and we'll get there but a lot of tw little tweaks go a long long way with color grading so i'm liking where this is at i'm gonna actually see what I can get out of yellow. I kind of like that because it's going into the clouds on the side of the building. Um, we can dump down the, we can drop down the luminance a little bit. And I like where this is. Another cool feature in Lightroom is point color. And this is a very powerful tool. So if I were to show you guys this, I'm gonna actually show you guys it on my selected car layer because you can also do it in here. Point color is a spot where you can select an area now let's just say the side of my car was like 
really warm, and we didn't want all the warm tones in it. Selective color, once you select that area, will select like areas and let you manipulate a hue spectrum in that range of colors. So it's for the sake of this video, we're going to just pull it down a little bit and make the side of our car even more white. Now, if I wanted to, there's a little bit of blue back here in the rear of the car. I could select that. It'll basically pick just the rear of my car, and I can say either add more blue, or I can say, hey, take, take some of those blues away. I can essentially do the same thing for the tail light, right? I can mess around. And the cool thing here is, see, but the, see when you do the tail light, it's messing the wheels too. So you got to be careful, right? But the cool thing here is I can also say, hey, give me my wheel selection. Let's manipulate that to a little bit more desaturated, but you get hue, saturation, and luminance shift just like the color mixer. So it's like the color mixer, but way more detailed. Sometimes you're sitting there sliding the color mixer is like, I swear that thing is green and it's actually yellow and you're wasting a bunch of time, right? So sometimes this it could be way more straightforward. So we're gonna take the luminance shift and brighten it up even more. And you can see I'm getting a nice pop in the wheel. I'm gonna make it a little bit more yellow and i think we're in a good spot to bring it into photoshop so that is just lightroom actually i'm going to add a little cinematic i call it crushing the blacks i'm going to add a little fade to my blacks something like that let's see what that looks like a little too bright I just want a little bit of like cinematic fade in the blacks. I like that a lot. Okay, so before and after here, here was the before, here's the after. The photo now for me is ready to go to Photoshop. So I'm gonna right click and edit in, edit in Photoshop. Okay, so once we're in Photoshop, obviously like the main thing I would do right in the beginning is I would select my car out with the pen tool just so I know everything is perfectly selected. I would take out garbage and whatnot like this needs to get removed probably this tree these light posts probably the entire house here um, I would do some cleanups the sewer cap can go but for the sake of the video I'm not gonna do those things um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just jump right into color and the magic happens in Photoshop at least I think it does this is where you can unlock a powerful tool so now a lot of people color grade with many things. There's a hundred ways to achieve the same thing in Photoshop. A lot of people use curves. I use curves for so many years. I still kind of use curves here and there, but nine times out of 10, I am using color balance. Color balance is very straightforward. You have your shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I have a shadow layer and we'll relabel that shadows. And then you have a highlight layer. We'll name that highlights once we have that done now one would say okay that's pretty self-explanatory when you're in shadows it's gonna only affect the shadows but not exactly when you're messing with color grading a lot of the color grading tools out there bleed like crazy they're gonna bleed all over your images even if you're not noticing it and then it's gonna always be like man there's just something off about the photo this will help you fight that so let's just for the sake of testing let's just say I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put a lot of purple up right so now if I zoom in to my car obviously this is not how I would color grade an image but I want to show you guys the strength of this tool so I have basically purple dumping into my shadows but look how much of the car is affected I'm gonna click this on and off look how much of the car is affected Practically every square inch on the car at all the brightness is affected all all of the white on the side of this car is affected the shadows are extremely affected uh, The shadow in the white spot not the darks, right? So that's an issue. So what we'll do to address that is we're gonna go to image We're gonna go to apply image and we're going to right now when you, you're gonna leave it merge, RGB, multiply, 100. Right now you'll see that we have, basically our image is in black and white. What's white and gray is what's gonna be affected. So since this is a shadow, right now it's saying the sky and the car is gonna be affected. What we need to do is we need to invert it to our shadows. 
So once we invert it to our shadows, you can see already, it's still pretty powerful, but already we're getting white back up in here. But if you look at our layer mask, a lot of our photos dark. So the apply image is saying, hey, you know, we're still dumping purple everywhere because you have a pretty dark image here and we're confused. Where you can get even more detailed is if you hit control L on the layer mask, you bring up levels, your darks, your midtones, and your highlights. Now, when I slide these, look down in the layer mask here. You'll notice in the layer mask that it starts to shift and more black starts to come in. The black is deleting the purple away from our highlights, basically. So watch this. So we slide it. We're going to take our midtones down. And then obviously, if you're keeping your eye on the photo, you can see it's coming away from the photo, too. So now if I hit OK and back out, our car is way more white and then just the dark parts are shadows. This is the way to color grade effectively, to color grade non-destructive, and to really pinpoint the look, the split tone look that you're trying to achieve. Do this, and this will help you be way more accurate. So this is obviously dramatic, but one of the cool things too is once you kind of have it set, you can always go back into shadows and say, hey, I really messed up. Let me go back to... It's, it's pretty self-explanatory where it's like curves. You're messing with so many little points. You can just say, hey, there's too much purple. Now we fight back the purple. Let's just say we want a little purple and we want to go like one of the cool blue and cyans. Let's add a little bit of green in there. A little less. And another thing you can do, there's two things here. You can leave it in normal. What normal is going to do is it's going to make the color kind of preserve the luminosity and affect your darks and your highlights they'll start to get a little bit brighter when you're doing stuff like this another thing you can do is go into color that won't mess with your contrast and your brightness at all so it's a pretty safe way to color grade so from here i'm going to just do a couple tweaks i'm going to see where i want to put the image i kind of like green and cyan being in there um, i think that it's going to have to be a little darker if i'm going to do that i'm going to click it on and off so you can see I'm going to make it so that it does not affect a lot of my mid-tones, something like that. I'm liking the direction that's in. Okay, so now we have to do something like that for the highlights. So we're going to come into the highlights. And if you're looking at a color wheel, a lot of times you'll look in somewhat of the range of the colors that are across from the color wheel. So what's across from blue, it's going to be like gold, yellow, orange, that kind of spectrum. So what we're going to do, and it's kind of natural, is we're going to put yellow and red into our highlights. Maybe a touch of green, a little bit more red. And you can see how I'm just like, I'm doing little, little tweaks to see what I like. And, you know, like I said, it, it all goes a long way. So you can see here how much of our photo was affected by that. So we need to apply image. We'll need to invert it back so that you see our little thumbnail switch back to the sky in the car. And now I'm going to click that on and off. You can see this heavily in the left building, and you can see it in the sky. You can see it all over our car, even the rear of our car. So this is where, you know, a lot of times, like I said, I'll pen tool the car out. It's usually the first thing I do on every automotive photo. But for the sake of the video, you guys don't want to see me pen tool. I'm going to cloud select subject the vehicle. It, Photoshop usually does a decent job when you when you select that little cloud based selection. Um, that's good enough, whatever. So what what I'll do here is now I might I might say, hey, whoa, I'm getting a little too warm on the car. So now that I have the car selected, I can just come with a black brush and say, hey, I want to take 50% of those warm tones out of my vehicle. So I'm just going to take them out with a brush. And there you go. Now the car is getting back to white. And I think a lot of times like people disregard this. They'll, t they'll do their color grade and the color grade will completely manipulate the car. And sometimes the color grade calls for that. Sometimes the look calls for that. That's fine. But a lot of times you can kind of, you know, make your client not mad, but confused, basically, especially like with apparel and clothing. If you're working for a brand, they might put out a colorway and you might be completely destroying that colorway. So if I have a, uh, let's say, for an example, let's say I have a Miami blue Porsche 
and my color grade goes crazy. It starts affecting and bleeding onto the car. And now the car looks like it's Riviera blue or like some electric blue. Well, the client's going to be like, what the hell happened? I, I'm a huge fan of Miami blue. That's why I bought Miami blue. And now I have these photos that don't even look Miami blue. Well, you need to preserve your subject's color. And that's why I'm saying in the beginning of the video, it ha the subject has to influence your color grade and be thoughtful into that color grade before you start manipulating it so much that it could actually turn your client off. The same thing goes for like a red dress. If you start editing too much, like the red dress could start to turn pink or start, could start to go purple or be dull and they might want it to look vibrant. It's something you have to think about and using some selection tools, you can really be thoughtful and help fight that it's kind of like the point color thing that i showed you in lightroom so if you don't edit in photoshop you could still kind of get away with point color and lightroom and getting some of those color tones out of your vehicle but yeah that's a nice little nugget and and something you guys should be thinking about so something like this is looking pretty good there's a lot more stuff that i would do to this photo if you guys saw in the bottom of the light rooms i shoot in a lot of brackets so i'd be adding in brackets i have a shot that's super bright but it's just for the wheels i'll show you guys that so you'll see like i shoot like this a lot so i'll shoot this frame i'll shoot this frame i'll shoot this frame and then i'll come this was a different frame but this frame's like oh my god it's such a bad shot but it's not what i'll do is i'll just take the wheel I'll just take this carbon fiber. I'll just take this muffler. That way, instead of like taking this underexposed shot and saying, hey, oh, I gotta I gotta bump up this wheels two stops and then bring in, you know, with an adjustment brush or something, things start getting noisy, colors start getting weird. Well, if I just truly shoot for the wheel and then bring that wheel to my other photo that I wanted the exposure to look like your photo is going to start looking really clean and crispy and smooth because all your elements of the car are shot at the right exposure. So that's another little nugget that if you're doing things like that, it's only going to make your color grade more efficient, more accurate because you're not stretching other elements of the vehicle and get, making things look very weird. Um, so that's another little note. After I am done in... Photoshop let's just say another little thing I'll do is like I'll add some like screen flares and stuff for the directional lighting a lot of times this like manipulates the color a little bit because you're like letting cast bleed in um, I kind of like that though naturally so this is obviously a little too bright I'll put that on like 30% but then I'll like stretch it so it looks like a haze is coming from the sun if I click that on and off you'll see like a nice little color influence there um, we can also do the same thing for the building. So um, something I would do here probably would be like a sky selection. But then I'll take that sky selection. I'll shift control I and invert it. And I'll take another. Let's just make that a layer mask. I will take another screen layer. And we'll go like this. We'll do like a little pull down. That's way too bright. We're going to fix it in a second. So we'll probably go really subtle there because we're we're implying that the sun is more to our right. We're going to go like 20%. And now we have this like nice little haze in the building. Maybe we don't want that to hit our sky. So this is why I selected the sky. So now I can shift inverse to the sky and hit. You ideally would want to layer mask this. And then let's tell it not to affect our sky with a black brush. 100%. So now we take it out of there. We didn't want to lose the detail. We didn't want that that gradient to affect the detail in our clouds and stuff. It's already inferring that there's a brightness coming from over there. So I just wanted that to bleed on the building, and you can see now. And now from there, we can say, oh, maybe it's a little too bright. Let's go 15%. Now we have that nice little haze there, and that's giving the photo an additional warmth. That's an additional color grade. I would also on this photo probably do a little soft light gradient pull from the bottom. I think the bottom just is a little too bright and confusing. So we'll just do it a little darker. That way it pushes your eye to the car. And I like doing like a little sandwich on it. So like we'll do one from the top too. Has to be on a soft light. But notice how when I pull down, I'm pulling down diagonally because my light source is over here. I don't want to pull down like this because my light source is over here. This is now, this is contradicting itself. 
So I'm just pulling from the corner here. I'm trying to get it to fade in there. So now that didn't fade in amazing, but you could still come in here with an eraser or like a layer mask and just like say, hey, you know, we don't need you over there. We have a little bit of a, just because it's annoying me, this vignette. Let's get everything on one layer. We're gonna get rid of that vignette here. So let's just go like that, generative fill. I like doing this generative fill or like a remove tool or clone to get rid of the vignettes instead of doing like something in Lightroom. I think it just does like a way better job. That's not even perfect, but it's good enough for the video. You can see the little square there. But yeah, if you sit there with like a healing brush and really fade it and stuff like you, it's better than just like inverting exposure into your corners. I don't know. I've never really been like a big fan of doing that in like Lightroom, but this is looking pretty good. So what I'll do now is let's just show you guys the before and after on the color grade here. So you can see like it wasn't looking like I was doing much, but now when I click on all the layers, there's a huge influence of color here and it's a very cool in the darks and it's getting nice and warm in my brights. You could go harder, you could go less, you could go with a completely different color range, but this is the way you guys should be color grading, or the this is the way I color grade my images. Sometimes it's a mood thing. Sometimes you go way harder with the colors, and sometimes you're just a little bit more desaturated. But what I'll do here is I will hit File, Save as a PSD. I'll make sure that it goes back into the same folder as a RAW. You want to make sure you're doing that because when you save it in the same folder as a raw, it will populate back into the Lightroom right next to the photos that were the raw photos, basically. So now that we saved our photo, it will pop back into Lightroom. You can see it populating right here, and you'll see it say PSD right there. So the PSD is right next to our DNG or our raw side by side. So if I click over here, it's before we brought it into Photoshop. If I click right here, it's the Photoshop edit. So the important thing, and I actually didn't mention this, but we have this file here that was our Lightroom edit that we were taking into Photoshop. This is your lead photo, and it's important to make your lead photo something that has a lot of the location that you shot in, a full version of your subject with all everything that it has involved with it, right? So like I have the wheels in here, I have the taillights in here, the car in here, the full car in here. I have most of the buildings that were from this little shoot. I have the sky in here from this shoot. Basically, this is my lead photo that then I can go and click on these other photos and basically sync the settings so that I have a nice even starting point across the board. So let's just say like, hey, we're going to sync the settings. So now you can see when I click onto these other ones, they're generally in the same spot that I edited the master photo, let's call it. I, They're generally in the same spot as the other photos, basically. So now when I bring that into Photoshop, I know the little tweaks that I'm making in Photoshop, or I'll make a mental note of my color balances in Photoshop, and I'll do those little changes to the photos as well. That way, when I'm looking at the image as a whole, I can make sure that everything matches. And the way I do that is when I'm done in Lightroom, let's just say I brought all these other photos into Photoshop and actually color graded them. So I would mark these all with green when they're all done from Photoshop. And I would look at them like this. I'd come over here and I go to survey view and you can look, you can click as many as you want and you're just going to like look at them like you're holding them up on a wall and saying, Oh yeah, these are, these are looking the same. So right now our master photo, I have the one before Photoshop just to show you guys like, okay, things are looking the same. That's exactly how I want it. One of my biggest pet peeves is when I look at people's photo shoots and like the color grade is jumping around like crazy. One photo's got a teal sky, but then another photo's got a purple sky and one's warm and one's cool. Like it, I like when a photo set is matching in color. I think that that shows professionalism and it shows consistency, but you can see the difference. If I click this photo in and take the other one out, now this photo, the master photo, is the one I brought into Photoshop. You can clearly see here that it's more blue. There's barely any blue in the darks here, and my car is nice and white. I got some of these warm hits. The wheels are, you know, 
every everything about that photo is different than these photos and i want to make sure that those match right but this is hypothetically speaking because we were using our imagination saying these other three photos i brought into photoshop clearly i didn't yet so what i would do is then say oh i'm a little off so you click that photo come to develop and say hey you know there needs to be in my darks there needs to be a little bit more blue like let's do something like that and then i'll come back and say okay we're getting there but now like my ground's purple over here and it's not over here Th this is very drastic because I didn't bring them into Photoshop, but you get the idea. I'm holding them up against each other and saying, do these have the same vibe? Do they match my set to tell my story, basically? And that pretty much sums it up. That's, you know, once I do those couple little tweaks, maybe I'll, like, come in the, on the PSD and say, hey, you know, my car needs a little bit more punch. Like, I'll come into here and say, you know, give me, a, it's a terrible selection, first of all, but... I'll come in here and say, hey, like, give me a little bit more clarity and I, I want a little bit more contrast there. And I'll come and do like little final tweaks like that to the to the overall image. But everything at this state is very, very subtle. It's just more so to get things to match as as a photo set more more so than anything at this stage. And yeah, that's pretty much how I color grade my images. Like I said, I've been using this tactic for over five years now on multiple different styles of photos. This will work great on anything, especially people when a lot of times you're editing and it goes onto their skin and you can make them look like they're sunburned or they have, you know, they're yellow or they look like they're a Martian or jaundice. This will also help in those situations. So just because I'm showing you a car here, it does not mean it's for specifically cars only. You can use this anywhere and apply it in your photos. So yeah, guys, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to check this out. I hope there's a couple little nuggets in here. I haven't seen a color grade video like this in uh, quite some time, especially using apply image. I think I learned apply image through a couple of other methods, and then I said, why can't I run color through this? And so I tried it, and it was absolutely amazing. So... Let me know if you guys have ever seen this. Let me know if this guy this helps you guys. And hopefully you were able to grab a couple nuggets. I think this format would probably answer some questions as far as like when and where to be doing things. I think that's a common thing that's not shown, right? We'll show you 10 steps, but it's just scattered all over the place. Well, uh, let's apply those. When do we apply those 10 steps? Uh, what's the order of those 10 steps? Well, I think this lets you see a clear depiction in how to build the color of a photo. And yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So I appreciate you guys for stopping by and checking the video out. And drop a like and sub if this was helpful to you. I post a ton of content like this. There's a ton of breakdowns of my actual edits, basically covering composition, color grade, lighting, thought, you know, location selection. There's just tons of things that I'm putting up on the YouTube channel to try to help and bring you guys a value. So if you're looking for more content like this, check out the page. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.